Yo guys, welcome back to another daily tracking session here. So today, um, I actually spent all day yesterday creating this uh, Christmas tree-like dancing guy. So now I'm gonna track him into a scene. So we're gonna get to the track. It took a while to figure out how to get this Christmas tree feel or texture to him. I ended up having to make these little Christmas tree particle or branches and spawning them onto him as a particle, a hair particle and then making the Christmas decorations. Again, it was it was a, it was was a all new stuff for me. I'm happy the way it came out. So let's quickly, this is all about the tracking here. So what I'm going to do, I've already got this scene here. You know what? I'm gonna actually make a new scene so we can break up the video that I wanna throw him on. And now I'm gonna go into new video editing. All right, so here I'm gonna go ahead and import my video here. Add movie. All right, here's the video. And this time I'm gonna actually render out the whole thing because the sequence of a dance is a little bit longer and I don't know how long it is. So I'd rather have more video than less. So I'm gonna switch it into 430. And while I'm here, it, it was shot at 1920 by 1080. It was at 30 FPS. And let's just change out my output. So I'm gonna go make a new folder and then change the format from video to EXRs. Open EXRs at a DWAA lossless. And that's pretty much it. That's everything we need to do. Uh, hold shift and press left arrow, goes back to the beginning of the shot and render, render animation. We'll be back after it's done. So it is finished. Let's go ahead and close this and open up. I'm gonna open up, open up a new file for you guys, but I'm gonna go back and open up the existing file that I had ready for this track. And then I'm gonna go over here to make a new tab and I'm gonna go make a new VFX tab, VFX track. Get ready, go grab yourself a cup of hot coffee. Mm, tea, beer, whatever you drink, put some music on because it's time to start tracking. Alrighty guys, so let's go ahead and import those clips. My scene should be set up already here, GPU. I got all my settings ready to go. I'll double check, 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS, yes. This folder here, I'm gonna go ahead and set it up now. So whenever I'm making test renders, it's keeping it in my temp folder. I wanna keep control of all the, where this stuff is going. All right, so that's saving PNGs in there. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and set that to also open EXRs and DWAA, which are smaller than PNGs, but they hold more data. So there's more positives than anything in that. All right, let's open up the clip. And there we go, that's what we got going there. I'm gonna quickly make a proxy of this for once we're finished tracking so I can have better playback inside of Blender. I'm gonna go 50% of the original build proxy. All right, proxies are done and ready to go. So we got that done. I'm gonna close that tab there. And then we're just gonna straight jump into it. Again, we gotta figure out what kind of track are we doing here? Is it going to be a movement? Is it going to be static? Or is it going to be a nodal pan? I am clearly walking in the scene and rotating. So this will not be a nodal pan. Again, a nodal pan is if you're just standing still and you're kind of like a tripod and you're just panning or tilting. We're not doing any of that. I'm actually moving in and out of the scene. So that makes this going to be more of a perspective track here. And let's go ahead, set scene frames, prefetch the video inside to Blender's brain. Let's get to work here. First thing I'm going to do is jump into track. I'm going to change it to blurry footage. I just get a little bit of better video uh, tracking out of that. And then I'm going to change my trackers to perspective and normalize and change my extra tracking settings to a 0.9 correlation, which is 0.90%. We want our tracks to be extremely sure. Now, instead of ram jetting a bunch of tracks like I normally do, I'm actually gonna come in here. Let's just do it this way, check it out. Let's go to our adaptation pin. I'm gonna draw right here on this ground. I want a lot of trackers here because that's where my main character is going to be. Tracks, and then we go detect features. And then we click down here and we say inside of the adaptation area. And then I'm gonna cut this down to point 0.1. And then I'm gonna cut this down to, uh, let's say 50. All right, so we got a lot more tracks there. Okay, make sure we save. I am on frame 37, so I'm not on the first frame. I'm gonna go ahead and press Control T track. All right, that is done and completed. Now the downside about adding so many trackers at once, it takes a really long time. The tracks are really slow but I just wanted to get this general area out the way because I know my track, my main uh, object is going to be there. And now I'm just probably coming here and just add some individual tracks here in the background. 
Uh, you want to avoid trees, you want to avoid leaves, you want to avoid moving shadows, stuff like that, because that's just going to throw the track off. So what I'm going to probably do is look for some really high contrasting areas. And we are on the last frame here. Let's kind of scroll this back so I can see the full track. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead and drop one right here. And it's going to go a lot faster now. Control, Shift, T. And look at that, just zips right through them compared to the other one took almost about two minutes when I had all those other trackers. And we hope that this stays from beginning to end and it does, nice. Uh, another looks like we're good area back here, but I don't think this one's gonna stay the whole time. All right, and what you can also do here is click on your track so you can see exactly what we're tracking here. It's like a security camera or something. And I'm gonna hit control T. And let's see how long that can stay in the shot be a plus if we can get it all the way through the shot and it's gonna get clipped off by the tree yeah so i'm gonna back up uh one two i'm gonna back up a couple frames so you can see how it's getting distorted there i'm gonna back up to right about there and then i'm gonna hit this button here clear track path so everything from that side of it is gonna clear back and that'll be that track will be done uh let's see another point we can look for back here let me go to the beginning of the clip here again press shift left arrow jumps us back to the beginning this little piece here let's see if we can get this to track and let's just get right to the top of it this is like an umbrella holder on a bike you can stick your umbrella in there and hold it what's a typical thing we use here in japan uh control t shift away there we go look like it's holding it's super nice and contrasted right let's just see how long it can stay in the shot ideally you want it to be into the shot the whole time which is just an added bit of fit it's getting a little skewed there but it's holding tough holding tough boom makes it all the way to the end those are these are two good tracks here okay now let's see if we can get another track over here on the tree let's say uh something like here a little bump here control shift t track backwards Yeah, that got distorted too much. I'm not even going to worry about that. I didn't even get more than halfway. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that track. And let me back up here. I think it may be right about here. Let's see if we can get this to track. Control T. And let's just say right about here. And Control T, go forward. Man, it's getting distorted. Whoa, is it gonna make it? That one almost made it, but I think the tree, I'm gonna actually hold shift, scale it up a little bit just to put a keyframe there and press control T again. And no, it doesn't, it didn't even move. Okay, so that is what it is. I'm actually gonna leave it frame 30. Oh, it did make it to the end. What am I doing? That was a good track. Okay, good. Well, let's get another one to track here in the background. Like I got a lot of good tracks here on the floor. I know that for sure. Uh, let's try this corner right here. Control shift T. I think the tree might come into play on this one. It's gonna probably cut it off. And here comes the tree. Here comes the tree. Boom, there it is, All right? Let's back up a couple tracks before it gets weirded out right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and opposite this time, clear track forward path. All right, so anything that's before that is gonna clear that out. So you know what, I'm thinking that might be enough. Anything down here on the ground that's noticeable that might be able this little white piece of paper here. I'm going to click on this little dot here. Oh, come on, guys. Let's scale that up just a little bit. And control T. And of course, the bigger you make your trackers size wise, the slower they're going to also take the track. See, like this one's taking a little bit longer to track. All right. That held it all the way through. Good. So let's go ahead and solve right now. Let's see what we got. I'm going to go here into the solve. And it wasn't a tripod. We're going to go automatic keyframes. I want focal length optical center and i want also uh radio distortion boom track away solve probably should have saved it before we did that <laughs> all right so it's been like over three minutes and it's still saying zero percent now this happened to me last time when i had too many tracks i noticed so like on the bottom there i think we may have too many tracks and like it's just taking a long time for it to solve so i'm actually um, before we saved right before we started tracking so i'm gonna go revert back to that tr to that file and I'm actually going to minus some of these tracks out because this is the second time this has happened to me where I added way too many tracks and it just takes way too long to solve. So I'm going to go back and let's go ahead and fix this issue here.
All right, nice. It actually canceled it by itself. I didn't have to force crash it. So obviously there's probably way too many tracks here in this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to back up here to the middle of this here and like this part right here. That, yeah, it's probably way just too many tracks. So I'm going to come in here. Come on, Blender. Come on, just chugging away. Actually, just select all and delete. Okay, which kind of sucks, but hey, whatever. All right, sweet. So those are all done. Now let's go ahead and retrack our solve error and hopefully it shouldn't take that long this time. All right, so what was our, our solve error was 40.7. All right, and that's not really what we're looking for. We're looking for anything under 0.1. So one and below. So 0 0.987654321. And let's see what we got going here. A lot of times right off the back, our, the first thing we can try to figure out is our keyframe points are these right here are keyframe points right now it's going from 207 to 295 that's what they chose so like i typically like to find we just want to find out what represents the best parallax in the scene and i think i'm going to go something like i'm gonna take that off i'm gonna go 118 here i think that's a good reputation of what's going on 159 and resolve all righty boom point four point four like we got lucky on that normally i have to fight with it that is done i'm keeping that i'm not i'm done matter of fact i'm gonna go ahead and save a different version i'm gonna save an alternate all right so it doesn't save over the other one if we had a problem good now what i'm gonna do there is still i'm gonna do a little bit of a cleanup i always do cleanup no matter what all right and let's go to clean tracks i'm gonna go anything that's over a two select it and delete that track clean tracks resolve 0.44 okay good and then i still see some ones here on my dope sheet up here on the top i see some ones so let's go anything over 0.9 clean track and delete it all right 0.36 good i'm gonna go ahead and sit save one more time and i think i'm gonna leave it there okay so what we're gonna do now is set up our scene let's get our origin point i want roughly to be about here to be my origin so i'm going to go ahead and set set origin set origin point dude why am i getting errors now <laughs> blenders tracker i tell you why am i getting errors hang on let's do this first set background set scene now let's go ahead and say set origin point there we go i just got to set the scene up first okay and then we need three points for our ground plane and i'm going to select these three right here and say i want that to be my floor just for the sake of it I think that's all I want right there. Let's go ahead and jump into our scene here. Now I'm going to go back. Man, Blender's really lagging. I'm 3.4 update has been like these moments of just lag. Like lag. <laughs> it's weird. Now let's jump into the camera. All right, it's not looking bad. I'm going to click on my camera here. Then I'm going to select up here and choose 3D cursor. And I'm just going to orientate this here. I want my X to be across and Y. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate on the Z and just rotate my camera around here. Something like, actually, let's just get the Y pointing straight down here in this crack here. Something like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and take my ground plane. And I think everything else looks OK. Before we move the ground plane, let's get the camera background looking proper. Jump into the camera here, background. And this is where we're gonna turn on proxy render. We had a proxy at 50% right there and turn that on. That's interesting, I wanna figure that out. Back to motion tracking. That was the whole point of making a proxy. Let's go to footage, proxy. Okay, maybe let's try undistorted. Build an undistorted at 50%. See, let's go back to layout camera proxy render 50 percent and there it is okay good so now look at our frame rate look at 30 fps that's good all right now i'm gonna go ahead and turn on my tracking markers so we can see where things are looking like tracking markers there they are the ground is looking nice and solid right let's go ahead and click on the ground plane here i'm gonna go rotate z and just kind of orientate it to the uh what we got set up here and tab into this here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab this back edge. 
and just go G Y. No, it's going to be X. I'm just move it on the X a little bit to about there. And that is sitting nice and tight. Let me just make sure it is on the ground. Now the ground does kind of dip down a little bit here. We can see, let's go to a side view. Ortho side view. Okay, tab out of this, go back to here. And I can see that the ground plane is a little bit slightly high and it is at an angle. Kind of dip that down. Let's go back to front view. And this side here, let me go rotate that just a little bit, something like that. Side view, rotate that. Let me go G down. So those are intersecting in the middle, back to the front, they're intersecting in the middle. All right, so that looks there. That's a lot more better, perfect. Okay, and it looks like we're gonna need to stretch it. Grab the faces here, I'm gonna grab this face here. And G on the X. Actually, are we in edit mode? Yes, edit mode, all right. Okay, and then here it's gonna be Y, G, Y, boom. All right, there's our ground plane. So again, we got our, uh, we quickly jump in here into our compositing. I got multiple setups going on here. Let me go G to slide this one down because this other setup was from the original file when I first started. And here's the one that we're gonna be working on here. And there's my undistorted node, which I want. I'm gonna make a copy of the undistortion node. I'm gonna put it here in the end of the pipeline because I wanna redistort the CG elements and I'm gonna hit distort. So it's gonna redistort the footage back to its original place. As you can see there, that's back to store to the way it was. All right, now 